Welcome to In the News for August 12th, 2022. I am Brett Burney from AppsInLaw.com. And this is Jeff Richardson from iPhone JD. Hey, Brett. Good morning, Jeff. It looks like you were uh, sharpening your Apple Pencil this past week. <laughs> <laughs> At least on the patent-wise, you had some really interesting links here to possibly, maybe, potentially, some updates that are coming to the Apple Pencil, hopefully, in the, maybe the next few months, maybe the next year. We don't know for sure yet. Yeah, you know, sometimes when I hear other people talk about the Apple Pencil, either they don't own one and they're like, oh, what is the big idea? Or they have one and don't use right. it very much. <laughs> and so, I mean, I totally understand that everybody's different. But for me, I just think it is such a perfect little device. I mean, it's right here next to me. Oh, um, yes. I love, yes. you know, in fact, I as I just picked it up, <laughs> I picked it up from the top of my iPad. I mean, first of all, uh -huh. what a fantastic design idea that the place that you store it is the place that it charges. So yeah. in my mind, right. it's as if the Pencil never runs out of battery because I have literally, literally never run out of battery power in my pencil yeah, because you're, you, you know, you, you store it in the iPad. So it's always charging itself up. So it's, you don't even think about the fact that you're charging, which is just so wonderful. And, um, and I love, love everything about it, but I've seen lots of reports, you know, people it's, you know, the first one was out and then three years later, the second generation right. came out and now it's been right. four years. And so I think people are sort of Ooh. thinking, gosh, maybe we're going to see another one. Might it be this fall? Might it be next spring? You know, sometimes iPads right. come out in the fall, some in the spring. Would this even be part of a new iPad? I mean, maybe they would announce a new Apple Pencil independent of an iPad announcement because maybe the new version, you know, which there must be a new version at some point, maybe it'll work with existing <laughs> yeah. you know, iPads, which would be fantastic. Um, so there was some interesting ideas of what could be different. And what I was linking to today was, you know, that patent website, you know, Patently uh, uh, Apple, which has yes, been around for a Patently long time. Apple, right. And it's a great website because right. they just go through the patents. And <laughs> some of them are so crazy off the wall and, you know, things that they, right. patents right. that were granted 10 years ago, the, the company never ended up using it. Because, I mean, I'm not an IP attorney, but my understanding is that if you come up with an idea, you better patent it quickly, just in case anybody else Absolutely. tries to do it, you know? Yes. So, um, yes. But these yes. patents do give some real ideas of what you can do with the Apple Pencil, because I love the fact that with the Apple Pencil, you can just tap with your finger. But, you know, the most obvious one is the fact that oh, you can slide yeah. up and down, which is such a natural thing to do. That would be a great way to, I mean, I can imagine like in a drawing program where you might want the size of your ink to increase or decrease, yes. or maybe even switch between exactly. Exactly. Colors, that would be such a such a nice nice change and some of the other things are like tapping on the back which would be a little bit more awkward in your hand or there's this crazy pattern for spinning your finger like a circle around the back of it which doesn't seem like the most <laughs> intuitive thing to do right. but you know i guess <laughs> i mean i guess it's an idea but uh and i also like the one that instead of just tapping the pencil you would sort of push down and it wouldn't even necessarily yeah. have to have a real sensor for that it could just you know it could fake feeling the push just by the fact that you're you know the contact there's additional contact right. between your finger and your pencil so that would seems like one that you could like a smush gesture that seems like one that would that would be easy to implement it would make sense so um i like it i like i like these I like ideas that. that's the official name the smush gesture <laughs> maybe they can have another gesture you know how some people can like twiddle a, a, a pencil you know in between all their fingers i've never been able to do that but people can like flip it real quick like or the other one go, i was a high school debater and people that were very uh had a lot more to than me yes used to, used to that exactly spin it around there I, I never could do that yes trick, but so many people that i, I couldn't either that. <laughs> oh i wish i could do that <laughs> to this day all these many years later <laughs> that could maybe like switch your apps or you know go Absolutely. i don't know you, you could get a little too crazy <laughs> i feel like there's that line that you could cross pretty quickly it's like you know what can be useful versus what is just going to be you know right. no one's ever going to use kind of a thing and right now i mean i i since i got my new uh, ipad 12.9 a few months ago you know, I, I think I used this as one of my tips a while back where you could just double tap on the pencil, right, to go mm -hmm, from eraser mm -hmm. to the pen. So useful, and I remember yeah. you saying, like, hey, it's glad that you're finally uh, using that <laughs> because you've been using that all along. And it yeah. just it's so incredibly quick and useful. But I find, Jeff, that exactly to your point about some of these stories, that as I'm using that, I almost I, I do want more. Like I want at least one or maybe two other gestures that I could quickly switch between my red pen and my black pen or my blue pen pin, you know, something like that. Or just like what you're saying, you could make it to be a, a, a thicker uh, line, you know, that kind of a thing. Because I find it now that I know that double tap, and I usually go between my pen and my eraser. Sure, now that I know sure. that double tap is there, I almost get annoyed if I have to like lift up and tap something else on the screen. So anyway, mm -hmm. just I'm glad that you linked to those things because 
I thought that uh, uh, it was just, it's always interesting to see what could be coming down the pike. Yeah. You know, as I mentioned, so, what I've been doing a lot, before we yeah. jump on, what I've been doing a lot of lately is I recently, I, I scanned a whole bunch of photos from some uh, vacations um, that we took years and years and years ago yeah. that I had the pictures in a book, but like, you never, I never think about them. Whereas when I have pictures on my iPhone, then they're, they're, they're a part of my living life because once they're on my right, phone, they're right. on my iPad, they're on my computer, they'll show up on my home screen. And so I feel like the, the I, you know, the pictures are, I'm getting more use out of the pictures, but when I, some of these old pictures, when you scan them, they have like little scratches or dust marks or whatever. And the pencil is just so perfect in a program. Like I, I love Pixelmator photo, but you could use the, the built-in photos app yeah. too. And like, it has right. a little spot healing brush that you can just tap on each of those dots and make them go away in a, in a program. So it's, it's, it's just such a, a, a perfect little tool, but again, I can't, you know, Apple must have something else planned because there's always a better version of something and Apple can make money, you know, by selling a new version. So I, 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 I'm confident a new pencil is coming. It's just a question of when and it's, what, it's what it will have. Well, just like you did a good job linking like your first review of the iPad with the Apple pencil was 2015. Like you said, the second generation came out in 2018. And like you said, that was three years. So yeah, it, it just, it all comes down. Like I, we don't hear a lot about that because everybody's focused on like the new iPhone, the new sure, iPad, but sure. man, I would love to see a new pencil. Pencil in some time to watch some Apple TV Plus because you had several links in here that were great. Uh, as luck would have it, <laughs> if you are interested in seeing the new movie called Luck from Apple TV, uh, in, and uh, what is it? If you have an Apple credit card, you could actually get three months of Apple TV Plus, which is which is great. I mean, what a fantastic lucky promotion there. Yeah, credit cards are always looking for a gimmick to get you to sign up for them. But the Apple credit card is a pretty good one. I mean, it, it works very well with the wallet app. I yeah, use mine. I love you know, it. Certainly, if you buy Apple products using the Apple credit card, you can get you know more money back. You know, I think it's three percent back for buying Apple products. So I, I don't use my Apple credit card for everything. I only use it for a small portion of my purchases. But I do use it, and I do enjoy getting the the money back. And it's it's an it's a nice thing for Apple stuff. So, but anyway, so it's a, it's a nice little you know extra for it if you've got the Apple card. You can get three months right. of um, Apple TV Plus for free. You know, I get the sense that I recently saw some numbers where Disney was announcing how many subscribers there are to Disney Plus, the whole Disney Plus family, Disney Plus, ESPN, right. and Hulu. Right. Right. And the total of that number, whatever it was, hundreds of millions, was more than Netflix. So they were trying to, you know, point out the, how many subscribers they have. They are such the big ones in the right. block. Right. And I get the sense that for the smaller services like Apple TV Plus and, you know, Paramount Plus and the other ones, that they're just trying to get people's attention. You know, they feel like they have good stuff. They just want people to try them out. And so whether it's because you're coming to see the sports, which is something they're promoting, or whether you take advantage of the yeah, special, yeah. I feel like Apple feels like if they could just get people to try it out, they'll realize how good the service is and stick with it. So it makes sense to see these sort of promos. So if, if you're a person that can take advantage of it, yeah. um, why not get three months for free? As I noted, it doesn't work if you have the Apple One subscription, but if you pay for Apple TV Plus individually, which is I think like five bucks a month, you can get it for free for three months. And right. you should do that right. because there are so many fantastic yes. things to see. Uh, I know. I, I noted that I just, you know, just last night, my son and I watched the season finale, season Season three of For All Mankind. Oh I know you don't watch the show yeah. yet, Brett. I don't understand yeah. why. I feel like you're a smart person. Why would such a, a decent person in my life not watch one of the best TV shows ever? I can't explain it. Listeners. Oh boy. Okay. But anyway, okay. one day Brett will wake up and his 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 tip of the week will be listen to what Jeff said two years ago. And right. Watch the show. Yeah. It's so good. It is so good. And the season finale, I, without spoiling anything, I'm just going to say there was something that happened in the season three finale that when you think yeah. about it. Um, it was actually completely set up in the season two finale, and I did not see it coming. And I, when I saw that, I'm Ooh. like, come on, guys, y'all are smart. So it's just such a great show. <laughs> but there's so many other good shows okay. too, to watch. You know, we all know about the Ted Lassos and the and the Severance and everything else. So um, yeah, so good stuff. And there's this new one. Dark today. Horses. I started. Yeah, I you started said, watching you the you Dark, said Horses. Dark Horses. And yeah. You, have you finished it yet? Or are you still very uh, much enjoy that? Oh, yeah. yeah. We Well, the season yeah. that's out, right? We're waiting that's for right. the second right. one to come up for crying out loud. The next season. Yeah. Right, and then the yeah, other one yeah, was yeah. the uh, the Hurricane Katrina show that starts today. Uh, which yeah, interesting. Looks like it will be you know dramatic and sad, but hopefully well done. So I'm curious to see. Um, you know, one of the the reviews that I saw said it's good. We'll see some of the other reviews, but just because I, I live in New Orleans and lived through, not that I was at, well, not yeah. that I was at the uh, hospital <laughs> while this happened, but I, I it definitely feels um, very much like I can close my eyes and remember going through all of that stuff. So it'll be bittersweet to watch, but uh, a good show. Hopefully. I the thing is. 
it, I, 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 I have a bittersweet relationship with some of these movies, like, you know, some of the movies about 911, that kind of a thing. And this, like, I was nowhere near around New Orleans at the time, but I remember some headlines about this particular hospital, Jeff, and it just grabs me in my gut. And uh, I don't, I don't know, like you said, the, the link that you um, uh, mentioned was from the Times Picayune, right? Your, your local newspaper there. Mm -hmm. And, and they watched it, obviously. They said that it was engaging and suspenseful. And suspenseful. So I, I don't know. Sometimes, I, I usually don't mind watching, you know, fictionalized <laughs> stories, but sometimes mm -hmm. when it's something true, it really grabs me. But I feel like if somebody's going to do it justice, um, well, we'll wait and see, right? It, we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how, how they do Hopefully that. Well, my wife told me it was just too real. She says, I don't think I'm going to want to watch it, which I totally exactly. understand. And, you know, I felt the okay. same way about, like you say, some of the 9-11 movies. It's like, well, do you really want to watch that? Do you? I don't know. So we right. shall see. But the point right. is, there is a heck of a lot of content on Apple TV Plus. So give it a shot. I just feel like, you know, you and I have talked about this as all these months that we've been doing this podcast, Jeff, we have really watched this content really grow from Apple TV. And I'm Absolutely. just, I continue to be excited about where, where it's going to go on that. Mm -hmm. Well, if you haven't moved out of your parents' basement, uh, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> there was a link that you, there, at least there's one advantage maybe to this. Um, this was a link, I didn't even think about this, and I kind of breezed through this story, but you can explain a little bit more. This was from the Washington Post, married and on still on your parents' cell phone plans. <laughs> Newlyweds are weighing the risks and benefits of combining <laughs> their digital lives. That's some of this really hit home to me. Like we got to start taking into account some of the things that we do. We share with all the different accounts, Spotify and Netflix, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But I'd never really thought about it from the cell phone plans, Jeff. Yeah. My kids are still in high school. So they're a little, you know, a few years away from getting to this point. Right. But I do right. think about it. Like, you know, as my kids have grown up and all of these sort of digital services, whether it's, you know, your cell phone plan or even just being a part of your Netflix account and everything else, you right. know, Right, at some right. point they're going to go off and have their own lives and you know if it's if it's something like a netflix account i guess that someday they'll just start paying it for for it themselves finally um but that and, and for, <laughs> maybe even for a cell phone plan too but there's other implications too right. like i think about the fact that you know my my whole family my, my wife and my two kids are part of our, our sort of family plan so for things like find my right. you can sort of see where they are and it does sort of make you think about what happens you know when you move on to the next stage of your life and, and do you get off the plan so um but it's interesting you know th this story also has tied up you know the millennials and gen x and all those sorts of things it's a cute little story right, right. That, that people go through and i we haven't personally gone through this in my family yet but i'm sure that people whether yeah. they're on the parent <laughs> end of it or they're on the child end of it have gone through it and it's uh it's sort of a cute story you know i think I, one of the things that hit me is you and i are old enough that we didn't deal with this necessarily right when we were growing up and it, i feel like to an extent now you know as you and i kind of got into this and had families we were able to add on our younger kids but i i'm trying to think about it from the perspective of like you know what if i was 25 30 years younger and i had accounts with my parents or i had my own account but now i have to transition into a family and mm -hmm. i just of course i've never thought about that just because it doesn't affect me I liked one one of the the ladies in here that they quoted they uh, she she recently got married and so her husband and her shared the Spotify account one of them had the Spotify account right they wanted to save money so, but it worked until quote the bossa nova tracks on her happy hour playlist infiltrated the algorithm and her husband started hearing syncopated samba beats while he sat in his car exercised and worked from home and it's like I never thought about that because I, I, when I got Spotify we all got separate accounts, right? We can share songs and we can mm. see each other's playlists and stuff, but I never thought about that. But anyway, uh, thanks for uh, linking to that and for the gift subscription link is on there as well. But yeah, you know, this is the, an interesting thing to kind of think about. That reminds me, Brett, that in the Apple Music app, there's a, um, and I'm sure that the Spotify and the other ones have it too. There's a thing where you can go like, you know, the songs that you listen to the most in 2022 and 2021 and 2020. And yes. I was pulling one of yes. the other day when I was with my family. And it's, it was funny to me because like the songs that I quote unquote listened to last year, you know, it was heavily influenced by like, you know, Megan Trainer and a lot of other people that are certainly good artists. I have no problem <laughs> with them, but they're, it, it, this was right? not I, Jeff Richardson, listening to them. This was my daughter listening to them when we're in my car. <laughs> uh, but I guess we listened to them enough. <laughs> that you know the, the the personalized selection for Jeff Richardson has a uh, a heavy Goodness. tilt towards what a uh, sixteen year old girl might be wanting to listen to. So I thought that was sort of funny. That's, that's a lot of Megan Trainer. It's all about that base. <laughs> okay, you know, one quickly before we move off the story, I just want to say at the almost toward the very end here, I just thought this was a great thing. I'm so happy they threw this in. The one non negotiable for one of the people that they 
interviewed passwords. It, they said it can be painful to talk about estate planning, but if one partner dies, the other will need access to important digital accounts. Jeff, you and I have talked about using a password manager. We both like one password so much so that you can be able to share all that information. So I'm glad that they and they even said even Facebook has legacy contacts, but you know, just making sure that you have access to some of that, uh, those passwords and those accounts that you need, uh, that, that's a great thing. And I'm glad the story um, uh, underscored that too. And since you mentioned one password, I'll just say quickly, I did not put this in my Friday yeah. post, but one password came out with a new version eight this week for the iPhone and the iPad, oh, yeah. which I purposefully did not post about because I'm still uh, putting it through its paces and I wanted to talk yeah. about it next right, week right, after right. I've had a lot of more experience for it. But I'll just sort of throw it out there that if you are a one password user, it is a brand new app. So it won't automatically update. You need to download the new 1Password 8 app. So you'll have both the 7 and the 8 on your phone at the same time. And then you can get yourself right, set right. up an 8 and then you're done with 7. You can delete it. But um, I just Good. mentioned that. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that perhaps. Next we'll time. talk more about that for sure. Uh, let's move on to the tip section of our podcast now. <laughs> Not the in the know section, but there's <laughs> maybe three or four stories here, <laughs> Jeff, that I thought were one wonderful that I learned so much for some additional tips. Let's first go to the Apple Watch, shall we? I thought this was great. Make your Apple Watch work better by changing these settings. And man, there were some good ones in here. You got to read through this one. Yeah, this one that uh, Jason Cipriani and who else, uh, Lisa wrote at CNET. Um, this is a great article right. because... The settings app on the Apple Watch, to me, is much more of a mysterious land than the settings app on my iPhone. And I say that because I feel like <laughs> I jump into my iPhone settings, you know, somewhat regularly, but I almost never go into the settings app on the Apple Watch. And in fact, independently of this story, as you'll hear soon, my tip of the week has something to do with this. Um, but they just did a great job of going through and showing that there's all these little things you can change. I mean, just, just to pick one of them, when, you know, the Apple Watch, uh, like I have the one that my display is always on, but some Apple Watches only have the display right. on when, when you turn up. But the amount of time that that display stays on is by default. In fact, you're on it right now. I think by default, it's what, 15 seconds. And in right. my brain, I've just taught myself over the years, oh, well, it's always 15 seconds. That's what it is. But they reminded me that there's actually a setting here that you can change it from 15 <laughs> to 70 seconds. And I knew this years ago, but I forgot about it. And 70 seconds is a very yeah. long time. But if you find that you're looking at your Apple Watch and the screen goes off, or on the newer ones, the screen dims before you're ready for it to right. go off or dim, you can change that to right. 70. Now, why only 15 and 70? Why isn't there options in between there? Like, why isn't there a 30 second or a 20 second? For, I, I don't know why it's just those two numbers, but but that's just one example of something that you can tweak in the settings to change the Apple Watch to make it yeah. work better for you. So they did a really good right. job of this article of going through all these little, you know, nitty picky things um, that you can do and make that make it just work better for you. So I like that. Yeah, some of these I really enjoyed quite a bit, like stop every app from automatically installing. That was good. Mm -hmm. I think right way down here at the very bottom, I liked this. Make it easier to find your apps. You know, by Great default, tip. it's that like that honeycomb. Yeah, it's like that honeycomb view. And I, I love like zooming around on my Apple Watch, but I changed it to the list view. And I think that that's, uh, that's much better. And I, yeah. I another good that. tip in here is the breathe app. You know, by default, your Apple Watch yeah. will tell you it's time to breathe. I turned that off a long time ago, but many people don't Me even too. can turn that off. <laughs> and then the flip side of it is some people like it. I, you know, I, I may have mentioned this in the past, but my, my dad got an Apple Watch uh, maybe last year and he was telling me, oh, I like the idea that my Apple Watch will just at some point tell me, oh, time to take a breath. I'm like, breathe. okay, so some people really breathe. enjoy it for me, not so much. But the point <laughs> is you should know that you have an option of whether you want that to happen or not. So yeah. I turned that off. A lot. I, I, I think for maybe the first two weeks, I was like, oh, this is so nice. I'm going to sit and meditate. But yeah, about <laughs> two weeks later, I was like, OK, I'm, I'm, I, I'll breathe when I want to breathe. Like, you don't need to remind me, Mr. <laughs> Apple Watch. And so I ended up turning that off. That was good. From the Apple Watch to the iPhone. This was something I didn't even know existed, Jeff. You can use your iPhone's hidden microphone effects. This is great. I'm, I can't wait to try this. Yeah, and I this is one of these things that I put in the list because it was new to me too. I mean, maybe I vaguely remember in the back of my head hearing about this, but I have not tried this yet. Um, but the point of the article is that you can change the way that your microphone sounds on some of the, it only works on some of the newer iPhones, but you can you know change the different effects so that either it's more focused on your voice and isolates your voice to cut down the background noise or just the opposite. Right. If you often use your iPhone with like in a speaker mode where a bunch of people are 
around you are participating in conversations, you can um, optimize it for that so that if you're in like a FaceTime call or something, it works better. But the point is, right. you know, just to even know that this wow. setting exists, I had no idea. Right. Standard voice isolation and wide spectrum. I, I completely <laughs> forgot that this was hidden in the uh, settings app. So this is called the mic mode, M-I-C, right, from microphone mm -hmm. mode. Now, notably, they say right here in, like, the second little section here, um, it doesn't work in audio-only phone calls, right, or when recording video on a camera, but any app like FaceTime or um, Google Meet, which I think is Duo, right, or something similar, Skype mm -hmm. or Zoom, Zoom yeah. that you can – yeah, you can use the mic mode, and it, the way it looks like that you do it, it, it looks to me, because I don't even know this existed, but I think you have, to, while you're in a call, you go into the control panel, and right. then up at the top, there is where you can uh, tap and hold on the mic mode button, and it'll tell you if it's in one of these modes, standard of voice isolation or wide spectrum. Um, I, I can't wait to try this. We should have maybe done the, the call <laughs> this way today, because I'm so <laughs> excited to try this and see if it makes any difference on there, but it this, this this article is great because it tells you what each of these things does, just like what you were talking about there. Um, you know, echo cancellation, that kind of a thing, so that it can help as it goes through, which is uh, really, really good stuff there. Hidden microphone effects. I did not know. That is great. Okay, let's go to shortcuts in iPhone. Uh, these were tips for using shortcuts on an iPhone. Now, we've talked about shortcuts quite a bit. Every once in a while, we kind of get on a little kick, or I find a couple of helpful shortcuts. But I got to tell you, I still don't um, – uh, don't don't use shortcuts as much as I really should. But here were, here was uh, what, three or four here from iMore, which I thought were really good. Yeah, and in fact, they're not just from iMore. They happen to be published on the iMore site, but they're from Matthew uh, Casanelli. Matthew Casanelli was part, he used to work for Shortcuts, I think before Apple even acquired them. Oh, and so okay. this okay. is somebody who intimately knows Shortcuts and he's got a newsletter you can subscribe to and stuff. So when he writes articles for oh, iMore, this is not just a random reporter talking about Shortcuts. This is someone who knows oh, the system that's intimately. Great. And what I love about it is he gives a couple of examples of types of things you might want to do with Shortcuts. And then he actually provides links that you can click and you can download his sample shortcut. He's got he's got hundreds of sample shortcuts oh, that you can so download. Great. And um and that's there's just some really interesting ones. And I like it, you know, maybe one of these shortcuts is exactly what you need. But what's more likely is that just by reading the article, it gives you ideas of, oh yeah, I can do that. For example, yes, he's got exactly. some shortcuts right. that, you know, you he's got one called dictate groceries that when you tap it, it will like open up a note that's the groceries <laughs> note and it yeah, will add something great. to it. And maybe that's not the particular one that you want, but it might give you ideas is to do other things. Like I have one where, you know, I will sometimes log the, the meals that we make at our house. When I say we make, of course, it's my wife that makes it because she used to be a professional chef. She's definitely making the meals 10 times more than me, uh -huh. a thousand times more than me. But sometimes we'll jot it down so that in the future, if we're like, oh, well, what's something good to make? We can look, I can look through the list and say, oh yeah, you know, two years ago we had this great meal, but it's the same idea. It's a shortcut that does a specific thing, opens up a specific note and adds some text to the end mm. of it. So just by reading this or, or the, the log weight is the same idea it's you know opens up the yeah. uh, the health app to to log your weight and just gives you a, a simple way to do it another one i saw when i read the article this week that i had never even thought this is what i'm talking about i'd never even thought about it i'm like what a good idea is there's one to um, use the uh, gps act app to our gps function to log your location. And so, for example, if you're taking an right. iPhone, if you're taking a picture with your iPhone, it knows where you are. And so it's going to have that geotag location. <laughs> but if you happen to be right. taking pictures or doing something else with something that's not an iPhone, with just a regular camera or something like that, it's, it may not have any sort of a geotag location, but you could use this shortcut just to say, wherever I am right now in the world, this longitude and latitude, remember that I'm at this location at this specific time. This and time. then when yeah. you go back later, you can say, oh, I know exactly where I was when I took this picture. Frankly, I wish I had, I had thought about this feature when I was in Italy a, a month ago, because it would have been great to use it. Now, unfortunately, uh -huh. I noticed that that particular one I'm, I'm talking about, if you click on the log my location, he has the wrong link in here and it, it, it opens up one of the other ones. Oh, no. but, so regardless, I Yuck. can't download this, maybe okay. he'll fix it in the okay. future. But it, I, it's a simple enough one to do. I could probably write that one on my own. Um, right, so it's right. this is a nice list for just to remind you whether you use the one that he's suggesting or just gives you your own ideas. There's so much you can do with shortcuts. It's basically like it's basically like a way to 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 develop your own apps 
without being an app developer. You know, in the old days, you would have to like download a specific app Ooh, that that's does a function. Way to think about but it. nowadays, yeah. just put together some commands and you basically make your own app without being a developer. Great stuff. It's like you said, I love looking at through shortcuts, even though I'm still not the biggest use of shortcuts. But when I see other people using the, just the ideas, Jeff, just gives me better ideas. Absolutely. And, and I'm every so glad dozen you that you go through, who, you know, yeah. you ignored 20 of them or the, the first 20. And then the right. 21st one, you'll be like, that's the one that I'm going to use every day. So. Well, and I'm I'm so glad that you t explained about Matthew Casanelli here, because, yeah, here's his here's his uh, website that uh he has this weekly newsletter. I think I'm going to subscribe to that. That's good for shortcuts. And then, of course, anytime that I think of, of shortcuts, I, I don't I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention our good friend David Sparks. He has a whole field guide on absolutely. this. Let me see if I can bring it up here. Yeah, which which it was just absolutely fantastic. And so if you are interested at all in doing uh, learning more about shortcuts, in fact, yep, here it is the the top one here, although that's shortcuts for Mac, but I know he has the shortcuts for iPhone and iPad on here as well. Good stuff. That is great. All right. And then lastly, before we get to our official in the no tips, this was a wonderful video you linked to. I had not seen it, but you know, you were just talking about using the Apple Pencil, Jeff, to go and modify some of the pictures and images. And you know, I had known on the iPhone that they have that edit button when you take a picture that, you know, it'll give you some of the options on on how to like change some of the stuff. You know, I don't know too much about color correction. Like, I don't know the whole thing about the RB, RGB spectrum or, you know, the hue or the contrast. I mean, I just kind of start moving sliders around and see if it looks better or worse, you know, kind of a thing. But this video, which is just a little over six minutes, I think, was wonderful to help me better understand like the differences between here's the picture that I took and just with a few different changes on sliders and stuff, here's how we can look even better better. Um, I think I've seen the lady, the young lady that was um, uh, in, in this from Apple, I forget her name, Maya, I think is her mm -hmm. name. But she has like a couple of professional photographers and they're walking around. It looks like it was Mexico City or something, right? Yeah. And it was yeah. great. Thanks for linking to this today. Yeah, so often, I mean, the difference between just taking an okay picture and a fantastic picture is just having the eye of a photographer. Um, and, you know, some people, you know, you learn that in school or you develop it over decades. But when you hear from an expert, I mean, one of the topics they talked about was shadows, just looking at the things that they see. I mean, shadows are around us all the time. Yeah. I don't really think about right. framing pictures that way to take advantage of it. And you look at the the professional photographer here, Eddie Chen, some of them he takes, I'm like, that is an awesome picture. And I could take that picture too. Yeah. You know, I've got an iPhone. I, I have know. Shadows. Those around me. And so it's good. But I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Another thing. So this is great for inspiration. Another thing that's nice about the app is they talk about how you can use the photos app, as you just said, to edit things. And, you know, although the photos app is not nearly as sophisticated as some of the apps I mentioned earlier, Photoshop, right. Pixelmator right. Photo, it's really pretty powerful. Um, you can, and, and you you joked, Brett, that, you know, all that you know is you're adjusting some sliders and, you know, you go up or down and decide if the picture looks better, but that's the whole point. That's right. why it's so easy and so I, nice. I know, okay. You, know, you can just go up and down and they, they have some good pictures in this video where they take a picture and when I'm looking at the video, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's a nice picture. And then they, they right. spend five seconds, 10 seconds uh -huh. adjusting the, you know, the, the black, saturation the saturation and and the, the black point i'm getting all the names of them wrong and they adjust a few things right, and i'm right. like wow that's a much better picture even better and that's the even idea. better you know we are surrounded by poor pictures all the time and with just a little <laughs> bit of of you know trying things out you can learn how to really improve your pictures and make them pop and you know it's we all know the difference between just a regular picture and a really nice photographer picture and yeah. sometimes it's just yeah. you know adjusting those levels and doing things that that bring out the best the the, the best of the picture and then you've got something really cool that you can enjoy yourself or share with others. So, you know, it's always fantastic yeah. to watch people that know what they're doing and try to learn something from their tips. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, we're currently on vacation and I was taking some pictures uh, yesterday of some mountains of where we are in uh, northern Maine. And uh, because I watched this video, Jeff, I literally just went in and I started moving the sliders and sure, I, mean, I duplicated the picture first, right? So I had the original and then I had like the one that I could play with. 
And sure enough, it just made some of those colors, the greens pop a little bit and the water pop and the mountain like kind of anyway, it, to me, that's fun. Even though I have no idea what the heck I'm doing, it just is a lot of fun to go in. So I'm so glad that you linked to that. If nothing else, it just had me understand that, hey, you can play around with this a little bit. Well, you know, something else you should take advantage of, Brett, since you're in the, the great outdoors right now is I'm yes. sure you're familiar with the concept of the golden hour, that time at the end of the day when the yeah. light, you know, and yeah. they, they point that out in the video that you can get substantially better pictures just by taking them outside as the sun is, you know, you know, start starting to set. Um, it just, it makes yeah. everything look yeah. better. And um, so you should, you can take some really cool pictures of just by going outside during the golden I'm on hour. It. So, yeah, I'm on it now. I'm on it. Okay, let's get to our official in the know <laughs> tip section. And Jeff, I'm going to jump right in literally and say you were right about something that I was so nervous to try over all these years. So where we are right now, we've got a lake. And so we were going swimming. And I mentioned, I don't know, maybe a, a month or so ago that I have never worn my Apple Watch <laughs> in a swimming pool or the water because I think I have lived for so many years of my life, so many decades of like keeping liquids and my precious electronics separate. <laughs> <laughs> and it just could never mix in my mind. And I was horrified at the thought of like, oh my goodness, I would never be able to take my watch, you know, into, into liquid somewhere. But you convinced me, my friend. You said you've done this for many years, wearing your Apple Watch into the pool. And I, and of course, I knew this, right? I know that Apple's talked about it, but I was still so nervous about wearing my watch into the lake. But yesterday, I did, and it was great because I got credit <laughs> for doing some quote swimming, even though we were just kind of splashing around. So I, you, we talked about this before, but I just had to revisit this and talk about the water lock feature on the Apple Watch. Now I've got into this accidentally before, so I knew that it was there. And most of the time, people can just go into the control panel or the control center on the Apple Watch by, I just do by swiping up. And if you'll notice, one of the little uh, items there is a water droplet. Right. And if you tap on that, it goes into the water lock function so that basically the screen is non-responsive. Um, and I'm sure there's some other things that happen inside, but you can't tap on the screen. You can't interact with the Apple Watch because uh, it, when you're in water, apparently the water somehow could look like a, a finger touch or something yeah, like that. So it goes anyway. into so that. You want to turn that off. Yeah, right, 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 right. So that was great. So I knew I could go into the water lock mode manually. But the way that I did it yesterday, because I knew I was getting into the, the lake is that I started a swimming workout. And when you go in and start a swimming workout, it automatically goes into water lock. And that was even uh, helpful. I just felt like that that was a little bit more uh, useful for me here. I'll bring up Apple's uh, support page on this that talks about this. And a couple of tips just on this quickly. It works exactly the way that you think it should. Uh, once you're in lock mode, it's locked out. Although you could pause your swimming workout by simply pressing both the digital crown and the side button together at the same time, right? Because you can't interact with the screen, but you can press both of those buttons, the crown and the side button together, and that would pause the workout. So if you needed to get out and dry off a little bit or something before uh, you stop the workout, you could do that. And then lastly, again, we talked about this before, but just because I used it recently, when you are all done and you want to get out of the water lock mode, and by the way, this is also useful if you inadvertently go into water lock mode because people have done that before and they're like, hey, but what? my Apple Watch is broken. It won't, it won't respond to me. Well, you might be in water lock mode. And in which case, the way to get out of it is that you simply just spin the digital crown rapidly, right? You just go spin, 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 spin. And you'll see on the screen that it'll tell you the Apple Watch is unlocking itself. And it's a really, I love it because it's kind of a really cool like boop, boop, boop. It has kind of this weird sound to it. And then it also vibrates because functionally it's actually ex, ex exporting or uh kind of uh you know spitting out expelling the excess water out of the uh speaker system and everything just it's a it's pretty amazing how all of this works and i know this may not be brand new to a lot of people and certainly not to you jeff but just yesterday being able to use that was so neat and you know it, it, and i finally got over my <laughs> my insane fear <laughs> over all these years of being able to wear my apple watch into the pool or into the lake so that's water lock mode with the apple watch 
Yeah. And then what you what you didn't even mention is that it also gives you the ability to communicate. If you have um, the the, yes. the lesser expensive yes. version of the Apple Watch that, that uses Wi-Fi, you would have to have Wi-Fi where you are, wherever you are, which you're not going to have in LA, right. but you might have it a swimming pool right. at a hotel, for example. <laughs> or if you have the cellular mm -hmm. version, then, you know, in theory, you could be in the middle of the lake. And, you know, if somebody sent you a text yeah. message saying, you know, how long That's before right. y'all are finished and come in for dinner, you can, you know, send a message and say, yeah, we'll be here about 20 more minutes, whatever. So it's, it's yeah. nice. And then, of right. course, you didn't even mention the safety feature you know something horrible happens it's you know nice to have something that you could communicate and call 91 and 911 and hopefully we never need to use Indeed. that but there's just so many reasons it's nice to to use an apple watch in water i i love it i love it that's so great well thank you my friend you were right <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so, uh, and i'm glad that you were yeah. So speaking of the Apple Watch, my tip is also an Apple Watch tip that, you know, I had uh, come oh, across good. this week and it has to do with the battery settings um, there uh, be because, as I mentioned before, the settings on the Apple Watch is something that I really never find myself looking through. But if you go into the settings on the Apple Watch and if you go down to so if you open up the settings app and on the watch and then you go down to battery, okay. which is not alphabetical, you just have to look for it. It's sort of in the middle. Um, you will find the battery settings where you can see, you know, what your charge is. And of course, there's easier ways to see your charge. But what I thought was interesting is that there's a um, sort of a graph there that shows you, you know, not only your current percentage, yeah. but it shows you, you know, over the last 24 hours, here is when your Apple Watch battery, you know, started to decrease. Oh. And so you can see if you are in a workout, it's going to de decrease more, more rapidly and, and when it was charging. And, you know, I will tell you all of these battery indicators, keep in mind, this is not at all a precise science. This is all, you know, the, even though it may show a specific percentage and you feel like, oh, I have 86% exactly, that's all a guess. Um, right. it's, it's more right. just around <laughs> that area. And in fact, sometimes both right, your right. iPhone and your Apple Watch <laughs> will lie they'll tell you you have a hundred percent but you actually don't it's just it knows that it's charged it enough and it doesn't want to charge it the rest of the way because it wants to try to preserve the overall life of the battery so there's all those caveats right. but um but it's just an interesting little display so if you're thinking about how your power is being used up in your apple watch take a look in this little settings and you can see oh, how yeah. you know wh wh where your, your battery is being used more throughout the day and maybe it can help you to adjust your behavior accordingly and i'll also mention this cool graph also exists on the iPhone in the settings app on the iPhone. There's yeah. the exact same thing. Right. It's in the, it's in the settings and battery. And you can again, and, and you have even more options and things with the battery. Um, I, I was thinking about this because as people continue to talk about new features that are coming out to iOS 16 this fall, one that hit the news right. this week uh, that I didn't specifically mention in the post today was that there is an option. There will be an option in iOS 16 that at the very top of your iPhone where there's a battery uh, you know, icon that either shows it completely right. full or 75%, you know how it goes up and down. You can uh, replace that with sort of a battery icon that doesn't doesn't graphically show you your um, percentage, but instead it just shows the number on there. And so if you like the idea oh. of looking up there and seeing a number, you can see it. Yeah. And again, I caution you, right. those numbers are only estimates there, you know, but it gives you a general sense of, am I more or less at 80%? Am I more or less at 20%? Um, right, a lot of people right. prefer the precision. So that's going to be an option coming to the iPhone uh, this fall. So anyway, that just made put batteries on my mind and, and it's it's what led to, to to seeing this on the on the Apple Watch, which is just another one of those cool little hidden things in Apple Watch settings. Yeah. I like I like that looking at that graph. I had no idea that I could do that, but it's sure enough. I can see where yesterday, where I was out hiking a little bit, it was in it was in the uh, the red mm -hmm. <laughs> graph there. But then, of course, I charged it overnight, and now it's all you know full, and it's just kind of slowly draining. Anyway, just in need information to have. I like yeah, that. That's I great. Have, exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of tips. I hope everyone enjoyed that. Thanks for listening as always. And Jeff, thank you as always for being here. And we'll talk to you next week. Enjoy your vacation, Brett. Bye-bye, everybody.